a very large number of people in the world suffer from problems with their jaw joint. Um, it's usually called temporomandibular dysfunction, or we shorten that and call it TMD. But while some people have discomfort or irritation, just perhaps a click in the joint, many suffer much more. It usually starts um, um, in the teens. A child will say, oh, I can click my jaw. I can remember doing this myself, but I used to do it just for the fun of it. But by the time they get to their 20s, they're likely to have discomfort with their joint. And then in their 30s and 40s, it often gets much worse. And I have people in their 50s and 60s whose life is being destroyed by the pain from TMD. Well, naturally, um, I have my own thoughts about it, although it's not directly connected to my work. I was fortunate enough, my very first job was as a trainee surgeon at Queen Victoria Hospital in East Grinstead, England. Now, um, at the time, I was doing a training in orthognathic surgery, basically cutting the bones of the face to put them in the right place so that they look good. Um, I thought this was the best way of doing it at the time. Anyway, um, as a very junior surgeon, I can remember helping um, senior, my senior colleagues there. And there was one surgeon who I think came up with a very simple answer. Many people who suffer from TMD only have it on one side. And it really can be very painful on one side and completely okay on the other. So this particular surgeon decided that the solution was to cut that joint out. Remember, surgeons always think that cutting something out is the best answer. Um, but he actually operated on this and he would remove the actual condylar, uh, condylar head, which is the ball-shaped top, so it can rotate. And he would remove that plus the neck of the condyle about that much um, and throw it in the bucket. And um, I used to help him with these. I was too junior to do the surgery myself. But it fascinated me because subsequent, I was given the job of preventing the child, the adult, most of these were, from swinging their jaw like that. Obviously, if you remove the condyle, the jaw doesn't open like that. But you go, so to prevent that, we put a flange. I used to make these in the laboratory in silver. And I fitted, glue it to the upper jaw with a flange coming down so that if they saw an air jaw like that, it dug into the gum and hurt them. So that they were very careful just to open like that. Um, and yes, it worked. And what surprised me, I found that after a few months, you could remove the flange and they would still open and shut their mouth fairly straight. But being an inquisitive chap, I wanted to know what actually happened in the long term. So I recalled, I think, 20 patients who had had their condyle removed five years earlier. And um, I can well remember the day the first patient came in. Because he came in and sat down. And I said, oh, yes, um, you've had one condyle removed. And he said, yes. And I said, well, the first thing we need to do is take an X-ray so that we can see what's happened. So I wrote out on the slip, take an X-ray of the left condyle or whichever it was, and sent him off to the X-ray department. Well, he was gone about... 20 minutes, half an hour. He came back with the x-ray still dripping wet. I think they drive them automatically now, but not in those days. And so I held it up to the screen and I saw they'd taken the x-ray of the wrong side. 
So I said, oh dear. <clears throat> so I wrote a little note and sent him back to the X-ray department. <clears throat> and sure enough, he came back a bit quicker this time um, with a note from the X-ray department saying, no, we took the, the X-ray of the right joint. And I said, it can't be. I looked at the X-ray and it was the joint that had been operated on. But there was a new joint there. That, you can imagine, flabbergasted me. But it taught me one very useful lesson, which I still use um, when treating temporomandibular joint problems, that the joint is incredibly adaptable. It can grow five millimetres in any direction, and it can even completely regenerate if this much has been cut off. I thought it was only newts um, that could grow a new leg. But there, before my eyes, was a complete new joint. Now, some years later, I read a report of, um, uh, I think, from Sweden. Someone had been, who had had this operation had subsequently been killed in a road accident. And when they got permission to review the joint, they found that there was a disc that had regenerated as well as the bone. I think that's amazing, but it gives you faith in the power of the body to rejuvenate itself. Anyway, um, uh, armed with that information, I developed a very different type of cure for temporomandibular joint dysfunction. Essentially, I think that if the patient can hold their jaw in the right position, then it will rejuvenate itself. Now, what might be the wrong position? Well, I found that nearly all people with TMD leave their mouths open too much, or certainly have done in their youth. You'll note that the major factor, the single factor, which associated with all TMD problems is, is that both the upper and lower jaw are set too far back, usually down and back. But all TMD cases have this. And in a way, that is why they have the problem with their joint, because if the jaw is pushed right back, the... Uh, head of the condyle pushes on the very delicate fibres which hold the articular disc in place. And if it constantly pushes back, sometimes it will sever those fibres. Then the disc floats about and then the bone, of course, is pushing on the bone and they'll have a lot of pain and dysfunction. So that was the one factor I found, but I found another. And I mentioned in my last paper, the tooth eruption mechanism, which every individual tooth has. This can only work if the teeth are in contact for about six hours a day. If they're in contact with more than that, they tend to sink up into the gum. If they're in contact less than that, they tend to erupt too high. But if teeth, in fact, this applies to every human animal, I believe, if they're in contact for between four and eight hours, depending on the pressure, in each 24 hours, then every tooth will meet at exactly the same position. Now, a lot of clinicians who treat TMD um, feel that the, its main cause is that the teeth don't meet evenly. Some of them will grind the teeth so that they meet evenly, but this usually fails within a few months. Others will put splints between the teeth so that they all meet together on the splint. But of course, that means that the tooth eruption mechanism can't work and therefore uh, can't really be effective. Uh, in my opinion, a splint will help to rest a joint maybe for two or three months, 
but you should not wear it for longer than that, or it will produce permanent changes in the joint, which will be in itself more difficult to cure. But all these factors need to be considered. And uh, um, I think there is one other factor that I do need to mention to you. Um, if I mentioned that first that the joint will grow back into the joint, and sorry, the condyle will grow into the joint. Now, what tells it where it should grow? Well, I think the position that the jaw is held in, if it's held in the right position, the condyle will move or grow into the center of the joint. If you leave your mouth open, the condyle will presumably grow further back to the center of the joint in the same way. Now, I believe if you look at this picture that I show, on the top left, you can see a joint in its proper position. But if you look on the top right, you can see that the joint is being held, or the mouth is being held forward, therefore the condyle has moved forward. But in the picture on the bottom left, um, you can see that after a few months of being held in the open mouth position, in other words, with the head of the condyle moving forward, after a few months, it will grow back into the joint. Now for a moment, consider what will happen if the patient then closes their mouth. Then the condyle will ram against the back of the joint. Now I think that is why people get this damage to the back of the joint. And that is because they normally leave their mouths open, maybe just a jar, but um, therefore the condyle grows back into the middle of the joint. So that when they bite together, it is driven against the back of the joint. Now, I know that is an entirely different idea, and most people won't accept it because they believe that the condyle is very immovable. But due to my experience as a surgeon, I know the condyle is very adaptable. And I genuinely think that that is the cause of most temporomandibular dysfunction.